Peace for Ukraine or Ukraine now. Russia just go home. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Hamare karkam pesh ke jate kai bhasha me kripya deke suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Everyone should be plant-based because actually, uh, from an ethical point of view, we don't have any right to take the lives of other animals who should have a birthright to flourish and behave as they want. Dr. Alex Lockwood, vegan, author, academic, and activist for the animal people, part two of two. Continue watching to find out more. I have been plant-based for so long now that I simply cannot imagine living any other way. Eliminating all animal products, including dairy, from my life has greatly improved my health. Focusing on a high raw, low fat, whole foods, plant-based way of living has been a game changer for me. Alana Minta Jordan, vegan. There are many ways to say how are you in French. One of the ways is ça va. I am Hinda. The people of Kanembu wish you joy, happiness, and love. May all things be beautiful for you today and always. Exuberant viewers, welcome to today's show. Dr. Alex Lockwood, vegan, author, academic, and activist for the animal people, part two of two. Dr. Alex Lockwood is a senior lecturer at Sunderland University. He is dedicated to teaching the interconnected relationship between all beings through his eloquent writing style, relating how compassionate acts can also be efficient tools for a better society and world. There are 211 countries and regions which have animal people protection laws. Liechtenstein is one of them. Liechtenstein, Animal Welfare Act, penalties including fines and imprisonment for up to three years are imposed if an animal person is mistreated, neglected, overburdened, or their dignity is otherwise disregarded. The same punishments apply if one organizes fights between or with animal people, or abandons them. Obey the law of your country. No more animal people slaughter houses, no more hurting, no more murdering them to eat, to lab test, or for any reason at all. Be vegan, make peace. So be it. Let's continue with the second episode of our show, as Dr. Lockwood talks about the hurdles in his early stages of transitioning to a vegan lifestyle. I'm sure many, uh, it's, it's similar to uh, other people, you know, the, I think the biggest issue for me was um, the social, you know, the social practices. Um, so I, I just happened to be someone whose mother um, worked when we were growing up. She worked in a, a, a chocolate company. So, you know, at the end of the week, she would always bring home sort of like, you know, the misshapes and the cheaper bars from the shop, the uh, staff shop. So we grew up on a diet of chocolate and actually, you know, bless my mum, but, you know, one of the ways that she showed love was by providing and she would provide us with a lot of food, you know. So certainly I always saw chocolate as a real comfort food and always have. So actually my real struggle was in those social spaces where everyone else is enjoying the thing that gives me comfort. Christmas, when the box of, you know, celebrations goes around. And I wasn't able to join in that comforting celebratory action. That, that was actually, I know it sounds quite small and it might be quite small for some people. 
But everyone's got something like that. Everyone's got the one thing where they find the comfort, they find the joy, they find the connection that that is sadly grounded in a very exploitative food system practice. And so moving away out of that was the hardest. But there, there was also really easy things because I'm a runner and I was part of a running group. And at the time in the mid you know, 2000s, there was this whole glut of books about sort of ultra runners and their plant-based diets and getting healthy and recovering quicker. And so actually it was quite easy, therefore, to adopt um, a lot of those healthy practices, um, which allowed the journey to be sort of much smoother. But I remember my first vegan shop thinking, oh, that was actually easier than I thought. Um, And over the time, it's obviously become much easier in terms of both like doing your weekly shop or going out to eat or going around to friends and having that acceptance. And then I think the hardest part after that was obviously still the social engagements with your friends. And it's always the friends and family are hardest, aren't they? Because you, you suddenly think they should be respecting your choice more by choosing not to eat animals around you. And many of them don't even think about it. It's not in their consciousness. Some do, which is great, and some don't. So those aspects, the social aspects of that that comfort around food and the social aspects around people not respecting your choices um, was were the two hardest things. But I think both of those things for me have become much easier over time. Vegans, God's true children. Scholarly viewers, Let's take a moment to relax and focus our thoughts on the Divine Creator. Not only will this benefit our mood and well-being, but others will also benefit as they soak in the relaxed atmosphere in our presence. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for these messages of peace. We pray for Ukraine or Ukraine. Welcome back to our show, Dr. Alex Lockwood, vegan, author, academic, and activist for the animal people, part two of two. True Nutrition for Adult and Children One of the common problems with research and study from academics is getting the message to the end user for a practical method of delivery. This is where Dr. Alex Lockwood's integration with the vegan society and plant-based organizations plays an integral role in delivering the message to the people at large via various media platforms. Dr. Alex Lockwood shares his views on the future and what he would like to achieve. I've written a a big report for the Vegan Society in the UK on the um, policy we need for a plant-based food system uh, and done a lot of work in that area. Uh, I've written, I've done a lot of journalism articles. I've even written sort of like novels and sort of um, uh, other sort of creative works that engage with these issues. Uh, For me now, what I'm really doing in sort of my, where I sit is at this hybrid junction or intersection of like academic research and creative writing and activist practice. And for me, I feel very privileged and honored to be at that intersection because, but it also feels to me really powerful place to be. So what I'm about is bringing um, the creativity into how we tell our compelling story for the better world that we want to create in a way, in a space where activists are acting upon it. So I'm sitting here in the, the animal rebellion offices in London and uh, we're working on sort of like how we tell that compelling story uh, and what are the words we use? What's the narrative? What's the story structure? What's the syntax? What's the leading with values? How do we tell that so it really lands with people in a way that actually convinces more people that we have a solution, uh, which is a plant-based future, which is a, you know, a, a safe, secure, sustainable food system. 
And uh, for me, it's really exciting to be here writing the narratives, creating the stories and, and doing it in a way that I think is going to help really, you know, shift more people emotionally to understand the moral um, responsibility that we have towards other beings and this planet. So for me, it's really, it's really exciting to be at that point. So I, I, I practice my creativity because I think the creativity is, is a real bridge into sort of like truth and moral truth and can tell those truths in a way that isn't proselytizing, it isn't propaganda, it isn't giving someone a lecture, it's telling a story. But I'm actually working with organisations that are a vehicle for good communication of those stories in society. You know, so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm at a really good place and I feel very privileged to be here. You know, we, we're trying to create a, a fundamental shift in society, a real change in the social norms about how we live, how we make the world around us, and particularly in relationship to the, the natural world and, and to other beings, to other species, to other animals, our companions, our, our kin in this journey on this planet. Um, but we live within a system and a society where the language is incredibly, you know, it's speciesist, it's grounded in exploitation, we don't have the ideas or the imagination or the language or the lexicon or even the syntax to talk about these things in ways that are non-exploitative and non-hierarchical and loving and compassionate. We have some words, we have some stories, we have some language, but they've been so corrupted and co-opted and limited and restrained and con constrained by the capitalist exploitative system that puts you, you know, that puts humans above other beings and says that you know animals can be dominated, they can be exploited. So it's, it is a massive challenge and my goodness, I, I'm not saying at all that I have all the answers, but I'm, I'm glad to be in this place doing the work uh, with other people. You know, some of who are the ones who will put it into action, other people are the theoretical ones really digging into like the, you know, the construction of how we tell this story. There are 211 countries and regions which have animal people protection laws. Obey the law of your country. No more animal people slaughter houses, no more hurting, no more murdering them to eat, to lab tests, or for any reason at all. Be vegan, make peace, so be it. Dr. Lockwood leaves us with some information on which actions are going to have the biggest impact on curbing many factors desecrating our planet right now. It is important to know that as a, if you're following a plant-based diet, then you're probably doing as much for the much for the environment as you can um, uh, in terms of all of the other areas of your life. And I think that's really important to know because it is a personal choice that you can be empowered to make. Uh, and when you do it, you're doing a really good thing for this planet that we call home. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's terrible because we shouldn't even really be talking about footprints because the f carbon footprint was a, was a scam introduced as a bit of greenwashing by sort of these companies to turn it from a, from a corporate or system-led problem into an individual problem. And it's always the thing that I think we need to tackle that, yes, of course, we have all a personal responsibility to live well on this planet. Um, but that is the first step. If we're going to talk about footprints, that's the first step in action against the way to live better on this planet. And the next step is to tackle where the problems really lie, which is in, which is in corporate power and corporate greed and um, oligarchical power and oligarchical control of sort of our economic and political systems. You know, so yes, everyone should be plant-based, of course, because actually uh, from an ethical point of view, we don't have any right to take the lives of other animals who should have a birthright to flourish and behave as they want. But that isn't the end of the system sister, systemic problems that we have on this planet. So looking at your carbon footprint is the first step. And after that, it's your, in your way, your moral footprint. You know, what are you doing to make the planet a better place and tackle, in a way, the forces that are, you know, driving our planet into sort of um, tipping points and egregious destruction that we won't be able to make our way back from if we don't tackle them now. From the depths of our hearts, we thank Dr. Alex Lockwood for his academic input into making our planet a safe haven for all beings. Vegan. Noble Royal Prince. Positive viewers, thank you for your company today. Coming up next is A Master Incognito, Part 6 of 6, on Between Master and Disciples, right after Noteworthy News.
May the wisdom of heaven touch the hearts of our lawmakers to accelerate and bring protection to all beings on our precious home we call Earth. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, hell not reach. Russia, leave Ukraine or you reign now. Peace be with you too. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash ve.